What's going on? It's your man, Kobe. Welcome to the Digital Dash. I'll be giving you guys tips on how to market your songs and get those numbers booming. Now, today, I have a very special guest with me, my guy, Arshan. He is a media personality, a journalist based out of Montreal, Canada. Is that correct? Uh, Vancouver, Canada. So, the west side of Canada. Vancouver. Okay, my bad, man. So, based out of Vancouver, he owns this really cool platform called Kids Takeover. They interview everyone from Polo G to Murder Beats to Zay Tobin and just a really bunch of cool creatives and artists that are currently coming up in the scene, man. So appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you for joining me today and hopping on here and giving us some game, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm, I like your content and I'm uh, excited to be here. Appreciate that, bro, man. I'm, I'm glad to see you staying happy, healthy, hydrated, washing your hands, bro. That's what we definitely, definitely here, bro. Uh, yeah, man. So I'm real big on just thinking that every person is bigger than their platform or their jobs or what they're doing and that we all pretty much have a story that kind of got us here. So, you know, if you would be so kind as to let us know what got you into the space that you, that you are in today, you know what I'm saying? What were you doing before that? And what kind of inspired you to start moving to the space of making your own outlet? Right. Um, well, so I'm 20 years old right now. I just turned 20 and uh, I wanted to be a journalist when I was in high school. So I think like grade 11, I really wanted to be like an on-air personality for complex and, hot new hip hop, all those blogs, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I would apply to all those places. I had a YouTube channel where I was just making these little videos, but um, I actually got denied like at every single place pretty much. So I, at some point I was like, you know what? I need to do this myself. I need to like make my own media outlet. So at first, you know, I would just interview these like random small artists. Um, and then eventually, you know, I would just like shoot a DM to every single artist or manager who came to Vancouver and um, pray that like one person would let me do the, do the interview. So I got one interview with Smoothie Margiela from the ASAP mob. Um, and then from there on, I just, I made sure I used that interview to get uh, the next one. Um, and I just kept slightly like getting a better interview. And then from there, you know, I just kind of built credibility. Okay, so it's interesting. So, so Smokey was the was the entry point into it, and you just were using that to leverage other interviews. What does that conversation sound like? Is it like, hey, check out my platform. We got Smokey, you know what I'm saying, take me a little bit more seriously, or was it just hoping that, you know, like an artist would care and at least open up to having a conversation with you? Yeah, I think, well, basically the thing is, is like, you know, if you, even if you're like nobody, or if, if you're like kind of nobody, right? If you send a hundred emails, one person will respond to you, right? Yeah. So yeah. my thing was like, okay, I know one person's gonna respond to me. Um, so next time, I, you know, if I wanna interview Zaytoven, at least I have something good to show them, right? So I just made sure that the Spooky interview went amazing. It looked amazing because uh, that was my only sample of work, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I just, I just showed that to Zaytoven's manager. They liked it. I showed the Zaytoven interview to Murder Beats' manager. They liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so what's what has been what has been the hardest interview for you to get? Like, which which interview stands out in particular? Is like, oh, uh, this was a tough one to get, and how did you get over whatever was making that a hard interview? Uh, damn. Um, in terms of hardest to get, um, you know the thing is when you have when you have like barely any credibility in the start, you you re rely on like DMing managers and stuff, right? And if they respond to you, you know who knows? Maybe they might not respond like ten hours later. So. I'm trying to think of it. I think there was this guy named Mr. Easy. He was like a really big like, international artist that I interviewed. And um, he's a very nice person. His team is really nice. But like the first day I did the, uh, I was going to do the interview with him. I waited like six hours only for them to tell me like, you know, he was sleeping in his hotel. So then <laughs> I had to uh, drive all the way back home where I live and uh, come back the next day and then do the interview. So I guess just, you know, the hardest part is, is waiting and not knowing, are you going to get the interview? Or are they just gonna mm -hmm. bail on you? You know, that's the hardest part. Okay, is it is it is it hard getting certain artists to like open up their interviews or getting them to? Um, I guess what I'm trying to ask is, I feel like we're seeing that since so many of the bigger outlets are more, for lack of better terms, I say like major controls, and a lot of artists aren't getting the opportunities to do interviews with these media outlets. I personally feel like we're starting to see like less and less media trained artists who really know how to like take full advantage of it of an interview. Are you are you seeing that on your end? 100%. Yeah, I can easily tell which artists have been media trained and then which person just like doesn't even want to be there. So I would say like the more they respect you, the better the interview will be, you know? 
if they don't know you at all, um, there's just a bigger chance that they're just going to like slouch and, you know, not really explain a story fully. Um, you just got to like make them respect you. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And I get that. Like getting them to respect the art, respect the content, want to be on the platform, that type of stuff. So let's keep that same thought in mind then. So let's say I'm an artist and I haven't done a lot of interviews. I'm looking at a platform like yours. I say, you reach out to me, you want to do the interview. What are some of the things that just off of what you've noticed help to make an artist interview stand out or resonate, whether that be from the standpoint of just being a good piece of content or just to the point of even being something that like their fans look at it like, oh shit, this was a really dope interview for you. I think every artist, big or small, should look at an interview the same way as the ones they watch, you know, like would they watch this video if it was coming out? You know, like, let's say I did an interview with a, with a small artist. That small artist should do the interview as if, you know, it's on the breakfast club or something, you know, just explain things with stories because that's what people actually relate to. If you just give like two sentence answers and like, you know, things that are just super boring and not different from everyone else, like no one's going to watch your interview and no one's going to connect to it. So like fans, you know, like you'll gain fans when people actually connect to your stories your background um so you got to be able to actually explain that in, those, in your interviews okay who's been who's been your your favorite interview from a, like that standpoint like they gave great answers they they did you know all the all the right things they took up all the right boxes in your opinion and then what were some of those things about the interview that made it just a really good interview hmm. um damn there's a lot but i would say i would say uh, toby lou because you know, he was kind of talking to me as if I was his friend. He wasn't being disrespectful at all. But the best thing is like, you know, if I would say any topic, he would just like bring up a story from, from back then. Like we talked about Juice World, and then he's like, oh yeah, you know, I went to school with Juice World, um, and all this stuff. So it's like, you know, you can use those little, little clips and like people will actually like watch it online. Like people think that stuff is interesting. So Toby Lou for sure. Um, who else? Let me think. Hmm. Man, I've done so many interviews that just, I'm just drawing a blank. But uh, <laughs> let me see. Yeah, I, I'd say I'd say Toby Lou was was the best. Okay, okay. So um, let's let's step back a little bit and kind of. Uh, I feel like a a big a big question that we always get is kind of what point should an artist start seeking to have these conversations or do these things with these media outlets? I feel like it's a big industry debate of always between like press versus just pure, pure like marketing, like there are some people who are like, oh, you need the blogs, you need the media outlets to cover certain things, to be a legitimate artist. And are, those, are, those who feel like you don't need the media outlets, you can do your thing without them. What's your stance on it? Where do you see uh, new media outlets like yours kind of fitting into the mold of an artist's career? Mm, that's an interesting question. I think, I okay, if I were an artist, right, I wouldn't bank on like, oh, I need interviews. I need to have this media outlet mess with me. Because at the end of the day, I feel like the best videos come from the ones that are the most genuine. You know, if I, if I really, really like your music, you know, and I reach out to interview you, I already know the interview is going to be great because I'm reaching out to the person, right? Whereas like, you know, if you're an upcoming artist and you're just like hitting up every single media, outlet, like, hey, let's do an interview. I don't think that's the right way to go. I think the best way to go is to try to get that media outlet to like hear your music first, you know? just push your music don't don't go straight to the interview because you know people just don't like closing on a first transaction like that anyways just you know share your music um find find out when they're doing like an open mic or like an ig live listening session get your music out like that and then um yeah i think from that point on just start talking with them over dm reply to their stories um and eventually you know you'll build like a like a little small relationship with them and even if they do, don't do an interview with you they'll eventually like poke your music or something. So I think it's very important to, to be in touch with the founders of the hip hop media outlet or even just like the writers. Just like try to be friends with them, you know? Mm, okay, okay, that's do I like this. It's going more so the, I feel like it's the, the advice everyone gets in the music industry is like find these people that are easy to build with because they like you and then just stick it out with them until it makes sense for you guys to do something, right? Yeah, because it, I'm not gonna say it's annoying, but it's just kind of weird to, you know, talk to someone for the first time, you don't know each other and they're like, hey, let's do an interview, you know? It's like, you just, just try to become friends or try to build some sort of like, you know, like, like get, get your music to the first, like try to let them hear your stuff first, you know? Okay, and that's interesting you brought it up too. So let's, let's say that, are, are there 
are there artist etiquette tips that you would give for reaching out to media personalities or for just trying to pitch yourself to um to just a blog or, or any of these content networks or anything mm -hmm. um first thing i would say is support them even if it's in a very small way because i think what what i hate and what a lot of other people who own media outlets hate is um when people just ask 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 you know without like giving anything at all so like like people can tell if you're not like if you're never liking their stuff or like commenting on their stuff or sharing it like you know and you just you just randomly dm them they're gonna be like oh like you know you just want something from me you don't really like care about my stuff so show a genuine interest in their blog um and if you're emailing them i would recommend like mention something specific mention like a specific video you liked on their blog you know when people email me and they're like, hey, man, I loved in the Pierre interview where you asked Pierre Bourne this question, you know, like, I like that. I'm like, oh, you're actually paying attention to my content. Like, you seem like a cool person. So it goes back to the support. Like, I know that you actually pay attention to me. You didn't just see the interviews or the numbers and go like, yo, I need to be on that platform. I need to, I need to get to yeah. for me. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. So for... And well, actually, let me back up a little bit. So you said before you hopped into creating kids takeover, you were already trying to be a sports journalist. You were already moving in that space. Um, yeah, like a music sports journalist. I really wanted to just be like an on-air uh, personality for for someone. For like okay. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna ask, have you noticed any differences in? Um, well, I guess let me let me back out there. I, well, I want to lead this conversation to is for those who are watching this that want to grow their own media outlets, like. Um, obviously, thanks to things like YouTube and Instagram, you're able to build out these platforms a lot quicker. Uh, I personally feel like than more traditional outlets like a complex or like those networks have. So what are some of the what are some of the strategies that you've been doing from your end that you've seen get you good growth results for kids takeover? Like what are some of the uh, is that is there any particular thing that you do like a strategy to it? Or are you yeah. just Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple. Um... I would say, I would say one of the strategies I use is like, you know, once you do an interview, even if it's with a small person, you have to, even if like, you know, this seems wrong or whatever, but you have to get like that little like clickbaity, like interesting moment, because even if you do an interview with someone that's smaller, but he talks about the time when, you know, he met Juice World at a concert or something, you know, it's like you have something to attract more listeners you know what i'm talking mm -hmm. about so it's like always try to you know do whatever type of interview you want to do like stick to your to your roots like what you like from an interview but try to get one clip that you know will like you know be seen by other people rather than like just your audience right now so so do you prep your interviews with that in mind like do you have a list of topics that are more like you know these are used to pull the sound bites out or you just let the conversation just flow into something like that I definitely have topics that I just am, am, am interested in because I don't believe in doing an interview where you're just getting like drama and stuff, right? But um, I do always plan one thing that I know is gonna get on other blogs, you know? Like okay. I always, if I interview uh, Enelie Chapa, right? I was like, okay, I have to make sure that I get him to talk about like Roddy Rich. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? So I, I asked him, I'm like, oh, like, you know, would you ever do a collab album with Roddy Rich? Something like that. And um, it got on like some Roddy Rich fan pages um, and it really helped the interview grow, to be honest. Yeah, okay, that's fire, that's fire. So, that's, so that, it, does that play a lot into who you reach out to for your interviews? Like, I know of course you said you're reaching out to artists that you like, but are you reaching out to artists that you think like, that you see has um, like a unique side to their story that you that you aren't seeing get covered and you want to get them to speak on that? Or, are you, or is it just still purely just, I like this artist's music? And that's the reason I want to talk to them. Both. I think uh, people ask me this often, but like, here's my criteria for who I want to interview, right? One, it's like, obviously, if they're a really big artist, they have, they're doing great numbers. Like, yeah, I'm going to want to interview them because it'll help my channel a lot. The second mm -hmm. thing is I have to like their music, you know, like it, it just has to be good music. I don't want to, I don't like interviewing people that I know suck. So yeah. <laughs> that's that. And then the third thing is that they need to have an interesting story. So for me, it's like, you gotta, you gotta either have two of those three or like one of those three or even all those three. But if you lack all of them, then it just doesn't make sense to do an interview. Cause okay. as, like you were saying with the story thing, it's like, 
you know, it's just so boring interviewing somebody who gives you these like, like one sentence answers. And, you know, if you're not having fun in the interview, there's like literally no point of doing it. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, man. That's a, that's, a, that's a great point you brought up, bro. Very great point we bring up a lot is the having the story, like st- artists needing to have a reason for you to even want to talk to them, right? Because um, we'll be, we'll get clients and things who want to do press and we'll be like, okay, before we start reaching out to a publisher or something like, what's your story? Because if the story is X artist drops new song, that's not interesting to you, right? Like, that's, that's, the, that's the worst story in the, in, in, in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but if yeah. it's like X artist, you know, wrote this story while blindfolded in a closet, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, oh shit, now you have something to talk about. Now you have something that your viewers will actually want to watch about, right? Facts. That's a good story right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, new thing, man. So as far as as far as you doing this, man, because I've 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 watched you grow this platform, I think, for about two years. I wouldn't say it was when I first came in contact with it. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say it was maybe the the Toby Lou interview that first like like brought you to my attention. What exactly are you looking to accomplish with Kids Take Over? Are you trying to build out a more traditional network like a complex or do you see it going more so so towards artists? Uh, artist services type of thing? Uh, what's the, the general goal of it? The goal of Kids Take Over is, you know, when I when I took matters into my own hands and created Kids Take Over, my main thing was like, okay, if people don't want to give me an opportunity, you got to make it yourself. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're 40 or if you're 12, you know, like you can make these opportunities yourself. So my goal with it was, okay, I'm going to create this hip hop media outlet because that's what I'm super into right now. But I want to eventually be able to have this brand where I can do anything I want, any interest. If I want to go into sports, if I want to go into clothes, I have this brand to help me do that. So, you know, it's like I'm doing interviews right now, which I always want to do. But eventually, you know, I do want to make clothes. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's been a dream of mine. I do want to go into sports. I want to interview like young NBA players. Um, and uh, I really just want to, I really just want to help young artists, man, because people don't realize like how much potential you have at a young age and how much tools you have at a young age. Like you have everything you need. Um, so I want people to make their own kids take over. Like I want, I want them to watch my content and just be like, all right, now that, that like um, pick me back up and I can be an artist. I can be a producer um, and I don't need to have like some huge cosign. So I think that's ultimately the goal with it. Yeah, that's dope, man. And you're getting to be right there at ground level with these artists coming up. Because that's what I like about your platform is, like I said, yeah, yeah, you're going for big artists, but even the big artists you go for are still, in a sense, like rising artists, right? Like, you know, Lee Chop is, is big, but he's, he's still not solidified yet. So you're still the platform where maybe some of these other uh, bigger outlets may not have the same interest in his story as you would have to your audience or the things that you want to ask, but you're still going to kind of, like, push this side out. And I, I always thought it was dope, man. Like, I like, I like, I like what I'm seeing so far, man. I'll say that. Thank you, man. Thank you. And I think I always end the interviews. I try to ask questions, at least two or three that will like help a young artist that's watching, you know, because it's great for Emily Choppa to talk about his new album. Right. But people want to hear like, okay, what you know, what was Emily Choppa doing when he just wasn't getting buzzed? Like when people weren't fucking with him, like what strategies did he, did he use to you know, get more followers or, you know, just, just things like that. Stuff like a young artist would really want to watch. Has there any? Has there been any particular gem that you picked up from these artists that you interviewed that just like stuck out to you, or something that like, yo, such and such said this. Like every artist needs to know this shit. Damn, that's so broad. Like, uh, there's probably so many things. I'm kind of drawing a blank, but uh, uh, da, 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 let me think. Man, off the top of my head, I probably can't remember this because there's just yeah, right. so <laughs> many like gems. Yeah. Yeah, man, I get it. Uh, going back to, I think I've, all the interviews I've seen, that Toby Lou interview is probably the one where it felt like, yo, Toby really doesn't care, but he's dropping out of the game right now. But like, oh right, I do remember from, from the Toby Lou interview what he was saying was, um, you know, he was just talking about how he he drove Uber at the time and like he didn't like you know like you had you got to do what you got to do if it seems like like a demoralizing job or whatever. It doesn't matter. You got to do what you got to do to, you know, get your, your career going. So I think I really respect him until he said the Uber thing, because uh, a lot of artists are just like, sometimes they're scared to, you know, if they need money, they're like, oh, well, I can't work a job, you know? It's like, no, sometimes you got to go work, be a fry cook at McDonald's and just make some money, use that to get some recording time, and then boom, like, now you have an opportunity. Yeah, but it's like, the money got to come from somewhere. We know, we know you have to spend the money, the money got to come somewhere. 
we're not we're not tripping on it. That's the, I think that was the part that got me too. It was like, oh, Toby, or, which I also actually I think is one of the cooler things of artists coming up today. Where it used to be so secretive about you know, oh, this artist has a job. This is what this artist is doing to grow. To grow. But artists they are like, nah, bro, this is what I did. I was working, you know, twenty hours a week at McDonald's, stacking my check up, going to do live shows every week, and I did this, and then here I am. Man. I always think that's cool, like. It seems Facts. like artists aren't afraid to, to share the game and let others know what they did to get there. Facts. If I was an, if I was an upcoming artist or if I got a chance to do an interview, I would definitely mention those things because people can relate to that. You know, mm -hmm. people relate yeah. to you working at McDonald's because they probably did it themselves. Yeah, yeah. That's right, nice, man. That's a good point, man. Um, let me think, man. I think I think it might be everything I wanted to touch on, man. Um, like I said, I just kind of I wanted to just chop it up with somebody that's working things now from a new media standpoint because we have a lot of people who watch this channel who want to do some of the same things that you're doing you know they want to be able to reach out to an artist they like they respect and do an interview so is there any piece of advice any you know any words of wisdom that you would give to the aspiring media personality or the aspiring journalist the aspiring journalist um i would say Number one thing I would say is if people aren't giving you opportunities, um, just do it on your own, man. You, YouTube is there. Instagram is there. You can literally do all this stuff on your own. If no one's giving you an internship and let's say, let's say you don't want to make your own media outlet and you want to be a journalist for someone, you don't, if no one's giving you an internship, forget that. Use like Instagram as your internship, you know, do these like one-off interviews with people and then show complex like, Hey, I did this by myself, you know, I just hustled and I got an interview with Zaytoven or I got an interview with like Lil Keith or whatever. Um, that will be your resume. So I would say just like use the internet to your advantage, man, because it's free. Well, so, uh, okay, I, I thought it was it, but you just made me think of something. So how much of your week is pitching to other outlets? Like, is that something you are like proactively doing or do you let clips float to these outlets and then just run with them or are you like pitching stories yourself to these networks? Are you pitching clips? Are you pitching parts of interviews to these outlets? Um, well, I have an intern now who, who does that. Like she basically gets clips, cuts them up, and then sends them to outlets. Um, but to be honest with you, when the moment I'm doing an interview, I already kind of know. I'm like, oh, shoot, like this is going to get picked up by Bleacher Report, you know? Yeah. Um, like I already know because before the interview, I specifically look at what are these media outlets writing about, you know, what, what are the things that are the, uh, that are getting the writers like attracted um, to these stories. Um, and for example, I did an interview with uh, Jamal Crawford, right? He's not the biggest NBA player or anything. He's pretty small, if anything. Um, but uh, Kawhi Leonard and the Raptors, I think at that point were, they just won the championship. And I was like, I know for a fact, if I ask him about Kawhi Leonard, right, he's going to give me some sort of story, some sort of answer. This is going to get on Bleacher Report. And um, that's exactly what happened. Like, as soon as I did the interview, I told my intern, I'm like, yo, send this, like, DM this to Bleacher Report. I don't care how big they are, they're going to respond. And that's what happened. Like, Bleacher Report responded to our DM right away. Um, and so did, like, every other hip-hop, I mean, um, basketball. Album. So I, I, just, I already know when I'm doing the interview that it's going to get a blog. That's fire, bro. But it's like, it's that muscle, man. You change yourself to you know, like, all right, this is what I need to do to, to spark something. Like, this is what I need to talk about. This is what, it's, like you said, it's interesting that you said you do the research on what are these outlets covering so you know what's going to resonate with them, what's going to make sense for them and get them to open up and want to post it, right? Definitely, definitely. You, you got to see, like, what's already out there um, and what has already worked, you know? Like, it's good to try new things and all, but it's easy. You got the internet. You just literally search out the trends that are happening right now and, and you can do it yourself. I bet, man. That's fire, man. So let everybody know where they can come find you and come follow you at. Um, it's going to be a lot of artists. I'm sure they're going to want to reach out to you, chop it up with you. I'm sure there'll be a lot of other personalities who want to reach out to you and chop it with you, man. So let them know the best place to come find you and talk to you. For sure. I would say um, the best place would be Instagram, which is at Kids Takeover IG. Um, if you want to send music or anything, I would just say this. Email it to us. Which, the email is on our Instagram. But don't just send the link. Like, tell me your story. Tell me like why I should care, um, and yeah, you know, just like present yourself in a in a good way. I right, bet, man. Appreciate you, man. And I'll make sure to put all of that information in the description below. We'll also have your your name, you know, nice and tidy on the video by the time this gets all wrapped up, bro. Um, so thank you again, man. Thank you again, bro, for speaking with me, man. We're gonna have to do another one of these interviews once you've grown some more, man, so we can do a, a backtrack on the process and see from then and now, bro. 
I'm down, man. I'm down, man. But I appreciate it a lot. Uh, thanks, Corey. Yeah, no doubt, man. And as always, if you feel like you learned anything from this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit those post notifications as well as I don't want you guys to miss anything. Once again, my name is Corey. This has been my guest, Arshan. And we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Thank you, man. See ya. Cool. You got everything? Yeah, bro. That was dope, bro. Appreciate you, man. Dope. Awesome. Um, is there anything else you need on my end? Um, Email me a high-quality photo of yourself. That's okay. For the cool. thumbnail. When do you need that by? Um, the video's not going to go up until next week. So let's say about like Monday at the latest. Uh, okay. Video's probably not going to go up for at least a week or two. I got to see what we have in the phone as far as like. <laughs>